One of the best and most efficient ways to look for wildlife in the slash pine dominated scrub areas of South and Central Florida is by flipping dead and rotting pine logs that are on the ground. This is a great way to look for a variety of invertebrates, especially ants, small cockroaches, termites, spiders, and centipedes. But sometimes flipping the right log can yield the occasional reptile. So let's see what all we could find. This tiny, brown, unassuming ant might not look like anything exciting to you at first, but this is actually one of my favorite recent ant finds. This is Nylandaria wojcicae, or the pine woods crazy ant. Now, in general, members of the genus Nylandaria are referred to as crazy ants due to their mostly unpredictable and fast, agile movements. In this species, the pine woods crazy ant is named that due to its nesting habits. This species nests in the soil underneath rotting pine logs, as well as inside rotting pine logs and in the leaf litter around mature pine trees, basically spending their entire lives in and around pine. Still nothing big like a centipede or a snake under any of these logs yet, but it's nice to see this absolutely massive ant underneath one of these pine logs. This is Pseudoponera stigma, or the pan-tropical wolf ant. Now these large ponderine ants live up to their wolf ant name. They are absolutely fierce predators that are mostly subterranean, mostly only being found underneath pine logs or in leaf litter, and have these absolutely massive mandibles that are razor sharp and serrated. These are actually very close relatives to the trap jaw ants. However, instead of having very long and thin, fast moving jaws, these instead have stronger and bulkier crushing jaws that they use basically to catch the same kind of prey as trap jaw ants. These ants are super fun to look at, but right now it's really hard to find the perfect log with a nice surprise hiding underneath. Until... Alright children, this was completely unexpected. This right here is a gorgeous southern ringneck snake. Now this is my first time ever handling this species right here and I was genuinely not expecting to see one of these. Um, now you, uh, it's pretty easy to see why this is called a ringneck snake as it has a orange ring around its neck but that orange color also continues onto its belly. As you can see, the belly is a gorgeous checkered pattern of black and orange. Check that out. Beautiful belly. Now, as it goes towards the tail, it turns more into a red color, and they'll actually curl themselves up into a little ball with that red tail exposed upwards as a defense mechanism, showing off that these are actually mildly venomous. Now, not enough to where if it bites me, anything would happen. So it would not do anything to me if it bites. Plus its mouth is absolutely tiny, but it's still just incredible for me to finally be handling one of these fossorial snakes. Now the word fossorial means that they can only be found living underground. So in dirt, leaf litter, and in this case, underneath a big chunky pine log, where I was actually more expecting to find like a centipede. I actually saw a Florida blue centipede go in, but I lost it, but I'm, I don't care. <laughs> this is just as awesome right here, this beautiful southern ringneck snake. Southern ringneck snakes are absolutely tiny snakes. And while this individual is relatively young, it's probably around a year old, maybe a tiny bit more, these snakes only grow up to around a foot long. Now, being tiny and fossorial doesn't give these snakes a large array of options to eat, so they mostly focus on eating invertebrates, mostly soft-bodied invertebrates like worms and slugs. Although, they have also been known to be able to take down smaller amphibians, other small fossorial lizards, and even smaller snakes. These snakes are a member of the family Colubridae, the rear fang snakes, meaning that they inject their venom into their prey through teeth that are all the way at the back of their mouth. Unlike more toxic species of snakes, like rattlesnakes and other vipers that have their fangs positioned at the front of their mouth. This means that ringneck snakes cannot envenomate their prey on the first strike. Rather, once they have their mouth full of their prey, can then inject their venom from the back of their mouth, which, depending on the size of the prey, can help demobilize it and make it easier for the snake to eat. The southern ringneck snake is a subspecies 
of the ringneck snake, which is its own species, and the only species in its genus, Diadophus. The ringneck snake is separated into many different subspecies, though, that range all across North America. Here in Florida, we get these southern ringneck snakes, as well as a subspecies found in the Keys known as the Keys ringneck snake, which does not extend enough north to where I am in Florida right now. While the southern ringneck snake is among some of the subspecies with the stronger neck ring, the Keys ringneck has a very faded ring around the neck, and some individuals lack the neck ring entirely. All right, children, I've spent so much time with this beautiful southern ringneck snake, but it is time to let it go right underneath the log where I found it under, which is right here. Now, I'm not going to lift this log up, just going to let it slowly slither its way back under where it was originally. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here where I find a rarely seen nocturnal ant species that lives in sand underground. Enjoy!